Hey guys, it's Mark Shepard for The Morning Cryptos, and while everybody else is watching Bitcoin and the Chicago Board of Options Exchange and the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, well, let's look at the altcoins and see where we can make some serious money with a lot less stress and a lot less uh, volatility pressure, all right? Start the music! It is the Morning Cryptos. It is Monday, December 11th, and futures trading has commenced somewhere in Chicago, and we're going to look at what Bitcoin's doing. We're going to look at what I did over the weekend right after my, uh, I did a little Crypto Cranker special on 10X uh, on Saturday. After I did Saturday's Morning Cryptos, I took yesterday off as I normally do, but I watched the market, and um, on Saturday... I saw that I was looking at a quantum U.S. dollar chart, and then I looked, happened to look at a quantum Bitcoin chart. And on the quantum Bitcoin chart, we had a serious, like, quantum was up. I'm like, what? And then I looked, and Bitcoin was down. So I literally, I, I took 100 of my quantum, and I sold it for Bitcoin here around uh, this 13... 200 mark right where this line is and I'll just draw a little circle around that Pretty much around here. I got in to Bitcoin about just a hundred quantum worth right, I don't even know how much it is because That stuff I'm not so good at and uh, But I knew it was down so I got into Bitcoin here Um. And then the, the point I want to make here before I even look at the news is that I had another chance to get in even lower uh, later on. So there's almost always there's almost always a double move. Do you know what I mean? There's almost here's an example up here when we had this correction, boom, it came down, then it re recovered a little bit, and then it came down again. So. A lot of times you have a second chance if you miss it, right? And and that's just that's just a trading experience kind of thing, right? And I think my son got in lower here. Um, and the question is, where am I going to sell? Because I'm not going to hold on to this. It's so volatile. It makes me a little bit nervous. Um, and what I but what I want to do is sell it up here somewhere so that I can buy back more quantum than I sold. And the question is, quantum's also looking like it's boosting a little bit right now. So that's that's what I'm learning. And I just wanna share with you guys my learning process because so far I'm doing really well. And But these are concepts that are kind of new to me and as, as kind of a math phobe, sometimes with the Bitcoin numbers be, between Bitcoin and quantum, it, it takes me a while to figure out what's actually going on. Um, and I don't really want to put you through the torture on camera of me figuring that stuff out, but I want you to kind of understand the technique here that you can get in and out of Bitcoin. So you're not, you're not a hodler, right? You're not holding on for dear life. If you actually want to be an active trader for me, I think Bitcoin is all the sound and fury where all the people are looking, right? But the real, the real opportunities right now are in the altcoins. So that's, I just wanted to say that right up front, the opportunities right now in the altcoins are mind blowing. And, but the news, the world is watching Bitcoin and the futures contracts. And I think it's definitely something to pay attention to, but it's also something, remember what I say over and over again, the quote from Earl Nightingale, <laughs> if you don't know what to do, watch the crowd and then do the opposite or and this is my little add-on, or sell hot dogs to the crowd. You know what I mean? What is the crowd doing? The crowd is all focused on Bitcoin right now. And the futures trading, we don't, no one really knows what's going to happen. Anybody who says they know what's going to happen is is full of hot air because it, 
It could make things smooth out, or it could make things more volatile. We don't know. It is unknown. And so that, the unexpected people, is what feeds our unconscious minds, what gets us hooked. Your unconscious mind gets hooked on a storyline, wants to know how it's finished. And most of us are used to formula stories from Hollywood movie making, right? Where the good guy always wins in the end. But in real life, sometimes you're the good guy and sometimes you don't win. And so the question is, how can we play in these shark-infested waters? How can we swim in these shark-infested waters without getting eaten alive, to quote an old, an old book by somebody else who I forget his name. Hmm. All right, so I just want to look at the news, make sure there's nothing that I don't know about, and then we're going to look through what projects I'm looking at, and we're going to see what's going on. Okay. Bitcoin price surges as future tradings begin. That was 26 minutes ago. Bitcoin futures launch sees price spike as CBOE website crashes. There you go. Bitcoin price surges 20% overnight as volume of CBOE futures skyrockets. Okay, so that's interesting stuff. And the question I have, and I don't know what you guys have, is... Um, we don't know how many of those guys have shorted this, right? And the question is, those guys can make money going up and they can make money going down. And they have a lot of experience in trading that you and I might not have. But you and I might have a lot more experience and more of a feel for Bitcoin. Plus, they're not buying Bitcoin. They're buying contracts to buy Bitcoin, right? They're buying pretend Bitcoin in some ways, if you think of it that way. Uh, and if someone says that Bitcoin's imaginary, <laughs> well, futures contracts are even more imaginary, and yet uh, real money is used to buy them, and real money is made from the buying and selling of them, right? If money is real, right? And we can get into a whole philosophical conversation, but we're not going to. So I'm going to grind through these, and then I'm going to make a decision to, uh, I may sell my, my Bitcoin right now. Uh, you know, while I'm on camera, or I may wait a little later in the day. I'm I'm kind of leaning towards waiting a little bit because quantum right now is up. But I want to I want to look at the dynamic between quantum and Bitcoin. And if quantum is down against Bitcoin, and I can get more quantum, and I obviously can. If I sold my Bitcoin right here, I would be able to buy back more quantum than I sold to get this Bitcoin. And that's the idea: this laddering up idea of selling high. And buying it back low, selling high, buying it back low, but buying back more at a reduced price. So that's that's the idea. We're really just shopping here, people. So let's let's grind through my list here. Bitcoin Cash is at the top, so let's do that first. Um, and I'll pull back to the one day price here. Boom. And if you notice, Bitcoin Cash is kind of following, not perfectly, but following my my trend line that I drew from below here and it seems to be kind of staying a little bit to the to the line that I drew so uh, and it's in a somewhat tight pattern if I pull this line down here you know right now it's it's kind of in a tight pattern um, that to me is a buy signal right so just consider Bitcoin cash might be someplace to tuck some profits if you have the notion of selling some Bitcoin, where to put it, right? Where can I get the most bang for my Bitcoin buck so that I can leverage my Bitcoin and and possibly get out of the volatility of Bitcoin? Because that's what makes me nervous because I've got right now about 1500 bucks worth of Bitcoin, but it, it could drop, right? It, I could end up losing 1500 bucks in a matter of hours, right? if I sold, but I'm not going to sell. I'm just going to hang on. And in the case that happens, I would just hang on because long term, I think it'll go back up. But that's the question in your mind and no one knows the answer. And that's why you have to, you have to take charge of your trading. And if you're not able to do that, that's okay. That's part of the learning process, but, but no one can tell you what to do. Uh, one of my favorite spiritual teachers basically says, 
People love to be told what to do, but they also love to hate the person that told them what to do. And for me, my whole thing is that you and I are responsible for our own money, for our own emotions, for our own thoughts, for our own everything. And if whatever's happening in your life that you don't like, the beauty is if you own it and say, okay, I created this, that means you can create something better. That's a little of the hypnosis of money, but it applies here very well. So just... Hmm, 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 hmm. All right. So back to Bitcoin. I'm going to just keep flitting back and forth to Bitcoin here uh, because we are up to 6338, six, uh, 16, 16,338 dollars at the moment. And I'm curious to see if it'll go past 17,000 while I'm doing the program here. So we'll see. And by the way, it's 611 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I'm excited about this. I love the idea of waking up on a Monday morning to do something I love to do. And that to me is exciting. So Bitcoin gold, right on my line, people. Right on my line. So not a bad time to get yourself some Bitcoin gold if you think that's a good project and it has some room to move. Um, and it has already demonstrated that it can go as high as 400 bucks. And it's got a nice upward trend, so pay attention to that if that's something you want to get some of. Dash. Dash looks like it's going into a bit of a consolidation pattern, and that's fine. Keeping an eye on it. Go to the one-hour chart here. Um, yeah. <laughs> not, much, not much news with Dash right now, which is fine. Uh, I don't know if I would get in here. So let's keep moving. EOS against Ethereum. Okay, that's one, one little view. And then EOS against the US dollar. Again, not sure I would get in here. So let's keep let's keep going. I have some EOS. That's one of my that's my second largest position. So I'm just kind of hanging on. I haven't made I've I sold a little bit at the top here when it approached five. And now I'm just hanging on with EOS, so not a whole lot of action here. I would not recommend a buy here. Um, if you want to buy, you can always buy, but you know that's. I'm just telling you what I'm doing again, just so you know. This is what I'm doing. Ethereum is kind of stuck in this beautiful little sideways pattern, which is good. It's a little bit stable right now. Not a bad place to put profits on Bittrex, if you're trading on Bittrex from one of these exchanges. Um, so very, very interesting possibility. It's good. I want to know what's being, what's kind of stable so that I can put some profits. What's stable that also has room to move up, right? And that the likelihood of it going down is much less, right? That's what I'm looking for. Um, so keeping an eye on Ethereum. And Ethereum right now is having another scalability problem with these crypto kitties clogging up the network. IOTA, uh, not a, not necessarily an entry point, and I can't get any anyway, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. Um, I think it's a good project, and, and when it shows up on Bittrex, I will definitely start trading it. Litecoin, way at the top. I would not buy Litecoin right now. If I had Litecoin, I would sell it. I've already sold all my Litecoin and took taken profits. And uh, when I see a pullback, when it comes back down to its normal trend line, I will get some more Litecoin. Not yet. NEO against Ethereum. This is a buy, people. This is a buy signal, okay? And let's look at NEO against the US dollar. A buy signal. Do you see how it's just kind of grinding up this slope? It's pretty close. If it came back down to this line, 32 bucks, between 32 and 34, this is a buy signal. And NEO is a project that I've read a lot about. It's a good project. There's a good team. They're not going anywhere. I mean, they're not disappearing. They're definitely working on their project. Um, and I still think it's early. They have enough of a track record. So this might be a place to put some Bitcoin profits and keep an eye on NEO. I am watching it. And I've got a... Do I have any NEO? I don't know if I have any or not. Let me go to my wallets here. Do I have any NEO? Yep, 
Yes, I do. I have 30 Neo. <laughs> all right. See, I can't remember all this stuff, right? Uh, I'm, I'm probably at the maximum of what I can handle as far as different projects. So uh, I have ADD, so it helps. Having ADD helps in this space, people. So I got a little bit of Neo, um, and I am basically still thinking, Neo, there's still time to get in on this one. All right, so keep that in mind. Omise go against the U.S. dollar. Not a bad place to get in. It's it's climbing up this line. So while everybody's focusing on Bitcoin, these altcoins are quietly, steadily rising. The bottoms are rising. The question here is, you know, whether this is a top. Could be a double top. You could you could interpret this as a double top um, with rising bottoms. Those seem to always pop. So what I'm thinking with Omise Go and Neo, as well as Quantum and some of these other projects that are really kind of blue chip projects that after, you know, Bitcoin kind of settles down or when Bitcoin has a big correction that these guys are going to, they're going to take off, right? So the thing is to get into position and then be patient, be patient, be patient as your plan, as your garden. I think of this as gardening theory. And that, you know, you plant tomatoes in May after Memorial Day weekend here in upstate New York. And you don't get tomatoes the next day, right? You get tomatoes two, three, even four months later in August and September is when you get your your harvest, right? And the other thing, is my, my theory of taking profits is when you are in profit, like you don't wait till September to start harvesting your first tomatoes. You start harvesting them as they become ripe. So you want to maybe take some profits off the top to lock in and then take another chunk of profits as it goes higher and then take another chunk of profits if it goes parabolic, right? <clears throat> and when it goes parabolic, you know, get out of your position into something else like Ethereum and wait for it to fall back down, then buy it back. I mean, that's a pattern we see over and over and over again in these markets. And once you kind of hang in a little bit, you, you get the sense of, oh, yeah, that's how you can really crank your crypto. So I'm starting to really kind of get, this is way, way better than the Ponzi schemes, people. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that I got my, got the Ponzi schemes out of my system early in my trading and go, you know what? I'm just going to trade. I don't want to give my Bitcoin to anybody else. And I want you to think about that. If you're in BitConnect or some of these others, just realize BitConnect is a brilliant, brilliant Ponzi scheme. But who are you giving your Bitcoin to? Who are you loaning your Bitcoin to, really? Right? Whereas a project like Salt, which we'll look at in a minute, you actually can put your Bitcoin up for collateral and you continue to benefit from the rise in Bitcoin or the or the fall of it, right? You might benefit from the fall of it if you have it collateralized, right? And then you can take the money out and actually buy real world things. And we'll see if anybody wants to do that or not when it, when it launches. But let's keep going. Quantum. See, quantum is now up a little bit. And so I want Bitcoin maybe to go up higher before I take profits. And then I might wait to put it back into quantum if when for when quantum comes back to, you know, 10 or 11. I think 10 bucks is a sweet price and it was just there this morning, right? Uh, so the likelihood that quantum may come back to 10 bucks is pretty good. But even so, if quantum is going to 30, it doesn't matter if you get in at 12. Do you know what I mean? So for me, quantum is still the place where I'm putting most of my profits because I think it's a blue chip project and it has, you know, f they have a five year plan and they're on target and they're, just working on their plan. Monero, again, another place that if you have Bitcoin profits, you might want to tuck them into Monero. Even at this price, I think Monero is is eventually going to be a $500, uh, $500 per Monero project, and it could even go higher. Um, but I would prefer to get in on a pullback. All right. Uh, Ripple, XRP, is actually the currency of Ripple. 
we are in a seriously large sideways trading range with triple tops, rising bottoms. And uh, I got in somewhere here in the middle. I don't know where. This is a one-day chart. This is a one-day chart. I don't know where I got this. Somewhere around here um, in October, I think I got into it. Or I might have gotten into it early November. I think I'm somewhere. Let's see if I can just. I think I'm somewhere in this area. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention, right, at the time. So. I'm sorry, I'm in the money a little bit in Ripple, but I didn't buy that much, and it's cheap, you know, it's like 20 cents, so I put a couple hundred bucks into it, right? That, for me, is always the best way to get started in any crypto, put a hundred bucks in, put a little in, right? Put a little in and see so that you watch it, right? All right, um, ADA, which is Cardano against Bitcoin, it's looking one way, and then Cardano against Ethereum is, we got this horrible chart. Let's see if I can get rid of that. You know, also a good time to buy this. This is a good project. Not a bad time to get in. This is against Ethereum. If you have some Ethereum profits, um, or profits that you've put into Ethereum, this could be a, a place to invest in. Buy low, sell high, people. Cardano, a good project. That's one of the ones I'm in. And I don't have a lot. I got some. Basic attention token. Looks like we've had a little boost here on the one hour chart. Let me pull back to a one day chart. Looking good, basic attention token. And I would still buy at this point. I mean, I, I bought right down here, I think, at the low of the lows. And... Um, I've moved most of the stuff in my uh, wallet over to Bittrex, but uh, I have 1,653 basic attention tokens, which is worth $347 right now. So I'm not going to buy any more of this because I would like my $347 or whatever the hell it was, you know, when it comes up here, I might sell some, right? And it's gonna. This is a good project. And get the Brave Browser, people. Get it out. Get it, get it and try it out, right? The Brave Browser blocks all ads. It's awesome. And that's what I'm using right now. Uh, okay, Civic against Bitcoin. Looking really down, right? Let's look at it against Ethereum. Looking really down. This is when we buy, people. When it's down, 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 down. And the thing is, it keeps coming down to its... Sorry about my mouse here. It keeps coming down to its support. And, you know, it's got decent volume. I'm going to get rid of the volume for just a second so you can see. Boom, 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 boom. We have four places where it came down to this level and stopped coming down, right? To me, yeah, could it go lower? Sort of. It's like, sure, it could go lower, but buy low, right? And when you look at Bitcoin where it's... Last we looked, approaching $17,000. This is 0.00058738 Ethereum, right? This is not a lot of money. I don't know what that is in real money. Let's let's look at what Civic is um, over here on this World Coin Index. Let me hit refresh because sometimes the old numbers show up. And you notice there's a lot of green here. Boom, but doom, but do 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 do. A lot of green. Civic was pretty far down the last time, but that's people. I'm saying this again. That's when the opportunities are looking you in the face. Look away from what everybody else is focused on and take some time to look down into some really good projects. Let's see here. Civic, come on. Last time I had to go down all the way to 100. Because Civic is quiet right now. I haven't seen it. Maybe I wouldn't buy it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's 30 cents, right? And it's up 9%, right? So people, it has a, it, it has a decent amount of market capital. 
a decent amount of 24 hour volume. It's a little bit low right now, obviously, but it's a good project. It's a professional project, right? It's a project that just isn't getting a lot of publicity right now, right? And so buy low, sell high. Anyway, enough about Civic. Ethereum against Bitcoin. Sometimes it's interesting to see this. Obviously, Ethereum's down against Bitcoin if Bitcoin's pumping. And let's go to Monaco, which again is another one of these card kind of things. And you can get yourself a card. And I don't know who's going to win this whole battle. But at the moment, not a bad time to get in. We have this rising bottoms here. It's also we have a wedge situation. So I'd be a little leery of putting a lot in. But roll a little. Put a little money into it. That's, that's what I've done. Okay, and Again, this is advice for me. This is my self-hypnosis program, people. Where I talk to myself and let you listen. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, Omise Go against Bitcoin. And I think we already looked at Omise Go on the other chart. So pretty much everything is going to look down against Bitcoin. Um, this is 10x. I'm liking 10x right now, people. I think this is a hell of a good buy signal. We got a really nice sideways channel. We have one, two, three, four. You could count that as five, six potential tops and rising bottoms. I think this one's going to pop. Whenever I see this pattern, it usually pops, right? So I would say 10x is up there. Civic is up there. NEO is up there. I would wait on EOS. Quantum I would wait on right now. Um, and we're going to look at quantum against Bitcoin. This is the chart that I looked at on Saturday. And I'm like, what is going on? Let's see if uh, I can find Saturdays. Do, 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 do. Where is Saturday? Yeah. Right. Let's go to the one hour chart. I'll show you what I saw. Okay. See, right now, <laughs> right now, quantum is up against Bitcoin. Right? So theoretically, if Bitcoin was down, I would sell more quantum. But Bitcoin's up and quantum's up, so that changes the dynamic. So so it was it was somewhere in this range. Maybe it was here. It's hard to tell on the one hour chart. Let me let me go back to the one day chart so I can figure this out. Because I just want, I'm telling you this story for a purpose, okay? This is not to glorify my trading wizardry. This is just to let you know what I'm learning because this is working, right? So, okay, so we are here at the, the 12th, no, the 11th of December today. This is the 10th. This is, there we go. So it was really here on Saturday. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Right here. We draw a little circle here, right down there. Okay, it went up, and I I sold some of it, <laughs> right? So I got a decent price variation. Bitcoin was down to thirteen thousand. I sold some quantum into Bitcoin. Now I have a small amount of Bitcoin, and and I'm playing with it, and now. The question is, I want to buy my quantum back, right? And where and when can I do that, right? So that's that's just what I'm trying to share with you guys. Okay, so let's look at quantum against Ethereum. Quantum is quite up against Ethereum. So again, it might be better to sell some quantum. If, if quantum comes up here, I might sell it and put it into Ethereum. And then I have a choice from Ethereum, I can go anywhere. Or from Bitcoin, I can go anywhere, right? I can buy any other coin. So that's again. Hopefully, I'm not, I'm not beating a dead horse with this. I this is this is key, a key trading skill that I am learning in front of you. All right, you don't need this skill. You can just buy stuff at a good price and hold it and then sell it. That's one level, right? That's like level B. <laughs> level A is just buying at Coinbase. Level B maybe or C. Maybe we're at level D. I don't know where we are, 
But this is the next level for me of where I can go, okay, I can actively take profits, park it someplace safe, find someplace else to take those profits and continually to constantly grow it and crank it, right? Um, and so that's really why I'm belaboring this point. I want you to get this point, people. If you already know this, then you're probably not even watching me, right? There are other people you can watch. My people, you guys, I'm trying to teach you guys something as I'm learning it because A, I learn better when I teach, and B, there's a lot of people who don't know this out here, right? This is a new a new world. Okay, so salt. Let's kind of move on. I'll stop philosophizing. <laughs> flapping my gums. I'm good at that, and I like it. It's fun. It's what I'm good at. Okay, fine. Salt. Salt. S-A-W-L-T. Salt. Um, salt is in a nice little consolidation. As I said before, I sold all my salt. I took profits up here. Um, because it's early in this project, and I'm practicing, right? It's all practice, people. So, might be a good place to get back into salt. I'll keep watching it. I want. I like the sideways trading ranges, and that's what it's doing. Let's look at Sia Coin. I will. I have a little bit just to get my my feet wet, and but I would prefer to buy down here. So if uh, if it comes back to this point in any significant way, or back even farther along this this channel here. See, I think it boosted up, and I think it's going to come back to its channel, and if I see rising bottoms, I will get more of it. See a coin. Watching it at the moment. Um, and this is NEM. This is NEM against Ethereum. And uh, I would not be buying NEM. That's not, I don't have that on my buy list right now. Um, this is a watch for me. I'm watching it. I want to see where it kind of shakes out. Um, and next is Monero against Bitcoin. So Monero is kind of down against Bitcoin. So that's why I'm saying this could be a place if you have Monero to take some profits. I mean, if you have Bitcoin, let me get this straight. If you have Bitcoin and you're looking to tuck your profits somewhere, why not Monero? It's really down against Bitcoin, but it's also making it kind of a nice, it has... It has a fairly nice bottom here. I like looking for some support. And it's also got some nice tops here. You could construe this if you're creative <laughs> as a triple or quadruple top. And again, this is just against Bitcoin, not against US dollar. Uh, this is a good place to get the in for me, right? It's at the bottom of a sideways trading range. So, huh. I sold all my Monero, but I might get back in with my Bitcoin here. So, could be Monero that I put my Bitcoin into when I sell, because I probably will not hold my Bitcoin. Or Quantum. I'm looking at either Monero or Quantum or some of these other projects. And again, against Ethereum, Monero is not looking as sweet, but still not a bad place to get in. Yeah, well, not a great place. I probably wouldn't sell Ethereum to buy. I probably wouldn't buy Monero with Ethereum, but with Bitcoin, let's go back to that chart. It's looking good. So there you go. So people, that's it. Let's go back to Bitcoin and see what it's done while I've been flapping my lips here. And we are still looking at this big even up here, the 17,000 even. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to watch it. I, I could literally take profits right now, and maybe I should, but I'm, uh, I'm going to watch it for a little bit before I do. So that's it for this morning. Uh, if anything else develops today, I may make a couple of extra shorter videos, but I wanted to give you guys the big picture here, and to, I didn't want to skimp, you know, and if you're willing to watch this, 
These, this is exactly what I would share with my best, closest friends if they were willing to watch, right? And most of them aren't, right? Some of them are. Um, but the thing is, there's a lot of opportunity today in the altcoins. There's a lot. Uh, I made a list last night before I went to bed. 10X, NEO, Quantum, EO, Civic, uh, ADA, Cardano, Basic Attention Token, and particularly Monero and Bitcoin. So I'm thinking it might be how I get back into Monero because I really like Monero and I think it could be a become a really good haven to tuck your profits and uh, to be able to go, yeah, they're, they're pretty secret there. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not doing anything secretly, but if you wanted to, that might be the place to do it. So that's it for today. Hey, if you like what I do, I really appreciate you giving me, you know, the opportunity to every day prove to you that I'm giving you some really powerfully positive, helpful value. Uh, and if you want, go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and do the, uh, the little bell thing. And if you like this, you might also like the Better Man Project, where I talk more about the uh, the factors that go into a man becoming as the, as the old army uh, commercials, all that you can be, right? And there's something about men that, and this is no knock on ladies, I love women, but there's a there's something that men have to do. We have to work on ourselves. And that's how we become the kind of men, the kind of women we really want to hang out with, also want to hang out with, right? So, uh, it's always about making yourself a better man in every possible way, and money is really important for us guys. It's important for everybody, but there's something about the male psyche where money really, you know, we don't go hunting, we don't we don't go out, we don't defend the tribe physically anymore, but how we manage our money is a big part of becoming a man. So that's part of it, and then I also do music, and if you like music with words and actual instruments, not just electronic stuff, uh, you might want to check out my music. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate this. This is Monday, December 11th. We are in week 20 of my 90-day challenge, of my of my 12-week challenge. And I'm um, just keep, I'm keeping it going, baby. And I love it. I'm having a great time. I appreciate you guys very much. I appreciate your comments below. And uh, whew, we are rocking on. This should be an interesting day. Peace, grooviness, over and out. Start the music. Mm -hmm.